the I have the honor, privilege, and blessing to introduce you to our keynote address for this year's event. Last night, as I listened to him speak over dinner, there were a couple things that I know I'll never forget. Some things not mentioned in the program. I listened as Zach spoke about his international endeavors, meeting and creating coalitions with folks from across the world, adding to his bank of wisdom. I listened as he spoke about the therapeutic work he did, working with the children of our nation and across the world. I listened to him speak about his status as a historian and curator, ensuring that we never forget the history that isn't mentioned in textbooks or talked about on the everyday news of many great black and African Americans that have contributed to the society we live in today. I'd like to read the small excerpt of the many great accomplishments of Zach in the program and then let him do the rest. Zach Zachary became an activist at age 11. This passion was sparked on Mother's Day, 1961, the day the Freedom Riders was firebombed in his hometown, Anniston, Alabama. He began to go to mass meetings, where he was honored with the presence and influence of well-known activists and poets, such as Gwendolyn Brooks, Nikki Giovanni, and Mahalia Jackson. At age 16, he met Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., when he came to speak at a mass meeting in Zach's hometown. Zach volunteered for the military, where he first began to write poetry after witnessing firsthand the continued oppression and discrimination in the military. After military service, Zach continued writing poetry and was involved in the creation of People's Revolutionary Art Ensemble, Prayer. In 2007, Zach established the Healing Love Institute along with the Dialogue Cafe providing opportunity to present his poetry and storytelling around the country. Zach is active throughout conferences, festivals, and has a host of interviews on NPR, college campus radio stations, and local TV stations. He has a book coming out of the press in early 2024, Forgotten Stories from Memory. So please, once again, help me welcome, with a round of applause, a man who will never forget, Mr. Zach Zach. Almighty God. Huh? 
So, being given everything we need to finish this course of our lives in good standing, whether we do it or not. Oh, I know there is some differences of thought on this. I have discovered in America, especially in recent years, that America has two pastimes. Now you all know the one that's in sports. And uh, America seemingly has another pastime uh, trying to change and influence everybody else. Where we go, how we think, seems everything is based on whether you are liberal, left, leaning progressively, bona fide Democrat, undertaken, <laughs> or a right wing Christian, nationalist, conservative, proletariat in the city. Whether you need to choose book condone burnings on Sunday, but okay to organize witch hunt letterings on Sabbath. <laughs> like that little play game that we did, change to the east, change to the west, Change to the very one that's most confusing best. <laughs> but I came to elevate and encourage and enlighten. Came to let you know that we have made some giant steps. I came to talk about the glories of the past and how the past makes way for renown. I came to whisper a resounding bugle success call louder than the drums of Kilimanjaro that whatever you do, never forget. Never forget where you come from. You say, you say, forget. Forget the past. But I want to remind you Dr. King, Martin Luther King, that is, told me when I was 15, when I met him in my hometown at 17th Street Baptist Church, to never forget. He placed his hands on my head, a blessing gesture in those times. He's so short and standing on a podium told me to keep on keeping on and never forget. Never forget your past and where you come from. These the words of Dr. King personally to me. And standing there was my Uncle Matt, we called him, Reverend Isaac McIntosh of the African American Episcopal Church, who stepped in before my parents and agreed to take me to see Dr. King. Reverend Reynolds, then the pastor of 17th Street Baptist Church, and Reverend Smitherman of Mount Calvary Baptist in Anniston, these two being the reasons for King's visit during these eventful times by attempting to integrate the main library in the city. Partially the decision was made because us young folk were getting too antsy. Too many instances of us taking matters in our own hands. Me for one, <laughs> going downtown, the day after the Civil Rights Bill was passed of 1960s. 
1964 to a whites only branch library where I was actually able to check books out. Then I went on to the courthouse cafe where upon asking for a cup of black coffee, I never had a cup of coffee in my life, was told to get my black mm -hmm, out of there. So uh, at the main library in Anniston, two weeks later, Reynolds and Smitherman were almost beaten to death by the KKK. I will never forget our reserve and resolve. If they live or die, we shall never forget. We should never forget. My dear father, 1965, on the Sunday Malcolm X was assassinated, walking into our church, whispered in my ear the sad news, but heard by all the young people. We disrupted the church service, ran out in tears, weeping, because Malcolm was gone, our hero and our stay. His solemn words close to our hearts, carried him to school that Monday morning with teachers holding space for us. We swore we will never forget. Malcolm, we pledge we will never forget. Bear with me. Going on into young adulthood, my college and military days, Meeting Nancy Wilson, Shirley Caesar on their tours for military troops in Europe, sitting down in private conversations concerning the conditions of, for black soldiers there. They conveyed the same message from home, never forget. Then the great Jane Baldwin, visiting also U.S. bases in Germany, my supreme honor of being able to read before him. His words also echoed through us, never forget. All walk and talk the refined line of truth and trust. Along the times, in the late 60s and 70s, Maya Angelou and Dr. Francis Cress Westman, Tony K. Bonbara, and Tony Marks, they're all gone on now. All together around Atlanta University Complex, passing the torch of Never Forget. Some of these same great ones and others in attendance at a play which I wrote, Old of the Stranger, for the dedication of the Pittman Center. Remember like yesterday, Maya Angelo calling me over to her at Play's Inn in her deep, radiant voice. I knelt before her after blessing me again with her hands on my head, just like Martin, they all gave the same message. Keep on keeping on and never forget. There were also the letters of levels of reprimand in open settings by these great minds. Ambassador Andrew Young at the 1969 planning meeting for George McGovern running for president, me speaking out in the presence of about 500 white people against the concept of nonviolence, the legacy of Dr. King, who had just been assassinated 
the year before. Ambassador Young taking me in the back and dressing me down. Zachary, never forget where you come from. Who and what brought us through? Yes. He remembered the encounter in 2006 when he spoke at Montreal College here, you know, Billy Graham's territory, so eloquently expounding, remember and never forget. Again, 1977, attending the Black Political Convention, Little Rock, Arkansas, meeting the great Amir Barak, also attended by Maynard Jackson, the first black mayor of Atlanta, the great Barbara Jordan from Texas, and the great Julian Barr. They rode whole demeanor, carried an air of never forget. The great Jose Williams, Reverend Joe Boone, and Congressman John Lewis having to be called off the stage floor because Zach holding up the whole delegation. The convention waiting on the last state, Georgia, to ratify, but that Zachary up there holding everything up. They all three walking in the room, telling me to sit my black mm-hmm down. <laughs> Yet with so much love and candor. But their main words and messages, sometimes though hidden, was never forget. Crying, never forget. Bear with me. 2015, walking up on Congressman John Lewis in the Marriott at the 50th anniversary on Selma, Bloody Sunday, the same words flowed again. Zachary, we must never forget. Thank God we have never forgot. Meeting Jesse there again and Dr. Al Sharpton and yes, the renowned Dr. William Moore, Barber, who, whenever he's in Asheville, first words of greeting or last words of his benediction, always, whatever you do, never forget. Moving about the West End in Atlanta, an area one time under Jim Crow, we as blacks were not allowed after dark. Then it was in the late 70s, early 80s, sitting down for a while with the former Black Panther leader, H. Rap Brown, or members of the last courts of the great Yvonne Dooley. Their words became like an order amongst us or greeting on respect, always upon sin, a pardon, a never forget, never forget. Standing silently in solitude for the homegoing of the great Jose Williams in 2000, who when Dr. King died, demanded that he be carried on that horse-drawn carriage, felt so adamant about it, went to his own land, Miss Savannah, brought back the horses himself, the same horses and their offspring bore his body to Atlanta University, where he had attended also along with Dr. King. I stood there as the horse-drawn carriage passed by, bowed and saluted with a 
others in supreme appreciation of one who always kept before us, never forget, seeing Sonia Sanchez at Furious Flower Poetry Festival 2014, bringing back to her 80-year-old memory I was sharing the same stage at Georgia Tech in the 70s. She said, in the presence of Nikki Giovanni and Haku Matabuti, standing there, yes, Zachary, I see that you still on the path, the path to never forget. With Nikki joining the chorus, Never forget, later in the festival, a special memorial honoring Maya and Amira, who had just passed on. And they presented with 2,000 black poets in a memorial of their lives as we bowed in honor of the two giants who taught us what never forget. Sitting down with the 11 elders of the Native American community, Salt Lake City, at the Parliament of World Religion 2015, we went on and on how we had not forgotten, encouraging each other to remember not holding grudges on what might be the non-remembrance. But remembrance is in greatness, remembering the lives of those who died for the cause and causes unrecorded. For memory is our strength. Memory becomes our repattern thought, ancestors, pushing the go-ahead. This becomes our motivation, becomes our life link to ancestors going on. It's never forget. Dick Gregory, upon sitting with him in 2015, bus boys and poets in D.C., we reminisced about the old times in Atlanta, spoke of King, Al Horn, the great white civil rights lawyer, Dick remembering my sister, Dr. Cora Zachary, he requested me later, Zach, walk an old man to his condo. I did with a bow, glad joy, and a driving theme of our conversation was, Zach, never forget, to forget is death. To forget we die. Invited as featured poet storyteller at Martha's Vineyard 2017, the African American Literature and Culture Festival, me being commended by Dr. Hannah Galt, former journalist to Mandela and first to integrate UGA. 1962, commended me for holding the past, being present, future now, for not forgetting our history and beyond, with the pride of who we be as a people of success, love, resilience, perseverance. Back to pyramid days, down through untaught sacred geometry, but genetic DNA, it be prone to never forget, prone to remember in this black community, whether in church, school, or play, they taught us to remember. For our remembering of memories is to know. To know begets freedom and never forget. We, this, we pledge and oaths
to our long line of ancestors living, dying, or dead, to never forget. In affirmation, they repeated these words before us, live or die, sink or swim, stand tall upon the rock of who you be, and know thyself. Woman, man, know thyself and never forget. We read these words in their eyes. They all had a certain look into us. The depth, the seriousness, the unspoken, but resounded deep in your soul. Hold fast and never forget. The words became a part of our walking being. We could not forget. Always remember where you come from so you will know where you are going. It became the ancestors' defining modes of greeting combined with all of the atrocities. We remember, as they taught us to remember, the highs and the lows, the glories and hardships too. Never forget, ancestor worship disguised as appreciation do. Their stories, victories, achievements to a resounding drumbeat of never forget. The glorified traditions which brought us forth. At times, they being feeble and aged, they would hold our hands tight without letting go. They would telepathically transfer memories of non-forget. Yes, the memories help preserve our history where others intended to erase and blot it out. After all be said and done, we cannot forget. Encoded with DNA, it was written in the way we walked. The savvy and the suave, acknowledging the past in each other, the language of supreme sophistication, laced in our bones with the memory of all of our glory days ingrained in us the legacy rules of our own greatness, the defining definition of ourselves we be. We never forget our life force. A guiding light helping navigate such a difficult yet glorious path, a path forged upon us that we turn into a victory shout march called Never Forget. Ancestors telepathically admonished us to never forget. Never forget the Harlem Renaissance along with the Black Arts Movement, the innumerable great inventors, community activists, scientists, Architects, skill crafters, discoveries, unlisted contributions, unrecorded by the dominant culture, yet unlimited and laid in the bosom of the earth. For the earth bear her own secrets and her own information, and the earth. Mama Earth never forget, and she is now opening her books upon these times, forged by our parents who had PhD life degrees.
haven are called safe haven for us. This great cloud of witnesses made it impossible to forget. Mother Earth forgets not, keeps records, keeps records for victory be in our memories. The never forget of a victorious journey, not a prayer. So thousands <coughs> upon thousands, thousands, quietly hidden on the archives in the earth, whose many works and patterns were stolen, never recognized, all said with their contributions, with their achievements, and their life work, they put it in us, never forget. They preserved in their persistence and purpose, their unforgettable determination, writing imprints as they went along their path to never forget. A roll call list, a great legend, unsung heroes from every black community and enclave in this country. Legacies, legacies left in part as the chain link channel. Libations poured forth through secret unseen heart vibes on back into the annals of the language of heaven. Left by ancients coated in high lifted stone. As I said, know thyself and never forget. We can never forget your dedication to the race, your perseverance and determination to win. From hopscotch, double dutch, hide and see, to Miss Mary Mack, Mack Mack, all dressed in black, to jump back, punch a Thank you, Zach. 